So far, I've been dealing with the substantive aspects of the Patents Act, and so today I thought maybe I should deal with the procedural aspects for a change. Thus, I'll be talking about the requirements that need to be taken care of when filing a patent application. So, I'll be dealing with the applicable provisions when you file a patent application, and I'll talk about the various sections and rules that need to be applied when preparing a patent application for filing. So, coming first to the type of patent application that could be filed in India. So, there are three types of applications. One is the ordinary application. Application, which is the first application that you file in India. So maybe you are you have developed an invention and you want to file a patent application and you file the first patent application in India. So that is called as the ordinary patent application. Then there is the PCT national phase application wherein there is a PCT international application and you have designated India as one of the, the offices where you want to secure protection and thus you enter the PCT national phase in India. So that application would be called as a PCT national phase application. And then comes the convention application wherein these applications are filed under the Paris Convention wherein you take priority from an earlier filed application in any of the convention countries. For the section 6 provides who is entitled to file a patent application in India. So it could be a patent application could be filed by either true and first inventor or an assignee of the true and first inventor. In addition, a patent application could also be filed by a legal representative of a deceased person who was entitled to make a patent application. So in case the true and first inventor has deceased or maybe the assignee of the true and first inventor has deceased, then the patent application could also be filed by the legal representative of that particular person. Further, the patent application could be filed in offline or online mode. If it, the application is being filed directly by the applicant, he can file it in an offline mode or an online mode, provided he has a digital signature to sign the application or the patent application could also be filed through an authorized patent agent, but that patent agent can only file the application in the online mode. Section 7 of the Patents Act provides what is the form of application that should be there when you are filing the patent application. So, it provides that the application for grant of patent needs to be furnished on a form 1. So, you need to furnish a form 1 with all the details of the applicant and the inventor filled in, in that particular form along with the complete specification when filing the patent application. So, before we go into what are the details required under form 1, let us see what are the timelines that are applicable for the three type of applications that we have uh, already discussed. For the ordinary application, you need to file a complete specification within 12 months of filing of a provisional application which is provided under section 9. In, in case you are filing a complete specification directly, so then there is no timeline. If the complete specification is the first application and that would be treated as the ordinary application and your date of filing would be considered as your filing date. For a PCT national phase application, the timeline for filing the application is 31 months from the priority date and this is provided under article 22 sub article 3 of PCT regulations. For conventional applications, section 135 provides that convention application needs to be filed within 12 months from the priority date. So, whatever is the first application that you filed in a convention country, you have to file the Indian application deriving that priority within 12 months of that of the first filing. So, let us see what are the details that are required to be furnished on form 1. So, you need to specify what is the type of application. So, you need to provide whether the application you are filing is an ordinary application or a PCD national phase application or a convention application. Then, you need to provide the details of applicant and inventor. Particularly, you need to provide the name, address, nationality, of these two entities. Then you need to provide whether the applicant is a natural person or whether it is a small entity or a large entity or any other entity. Along with these details, you also need to provide the title of the invention, what are the number of claims, what are the number of pages of description and drawing. Then you also need to provide the details of the priority application in case you are deriving a priority such as in the case of a conventional application or a PCT national phase application and also the PCT international application in case it is a PCT national phase application that you are filing. So, obviously, you need to provide the details of the PCT international application from which you are deriving the PCT national phase application. Also, you need to provide a declaration by the inventors assigning their rights to the applicant or in case the applicant in the convention country is different and the applicant in India is different, then also there needs to be a declaration that is provided by the applicant in the convention country assigning their right to the applicant in India. So, this is called as proof of right of the applicant in India. So, you need to provide details regarding how that particular applicant is entitled to make this application that you are filing before the Indian Patent Office. Let us now see what should be the content of this specification that you need to file along with Form 1. This is provided under Section 10. It says that you can file either a provisional or a complete specification and it has to be furnished in Form 2 which is provided under Rule 13. So, the provisional or complete specification should describe the invention and also it should include a title to define what 
is the subject matter of the invention in case you are using drawings to explain your invention then the procedure for making those drawings is provided under rule 15 which says that it should be on a4 sheets then there are specific margins which you need to take care of when preparing those drawings and in the drawing sheet the, the name of the applicant should be mentioned on the left top corner and the number of sheets and the sheet number are to be mentioned on the right top corner further the name and signature of the agent or applicant is to be provided on the right bottom corner of the drawing sheet also along with the complete specification you also need to submit an abstract under rule 13 sub rule 7 it says that the abstract should include a title of an invention in up to 15 words it should also provide a brief summary of the invention and it should be limited to a maximum of 150 words and also specify a reference figure section 10 subsection 4 further provides the requirements that need to be fulfilled for a complete specification so that there are specific requirements which the complete specification must adhere to so it should fully and particularly describe the invention that is the purpose of a patent it should explain the invention to any person who's reading the complete specification it should disclose the best method of performing the invention for which the protection is being sought so you need to describe what is the best method of performing your invention the specification should not be vague about how your invention would have to be worked then there should be claims which define the scope of protection that is available i think everyone knows that claim are the most important part of a complete specification then the complete specification should have an abstract we already discussed what the abstract should have in case the invention relates to use of any biological material that has been mentioned in the specification then what is required is that the applicant needs to deposit to the international de depository authority the biological material so that it could be referred to whenever the examination is happening so the international depository authorities would be notified by the government and the last notification that i could gather was published in the gazette of india in in 2003 it provides the details of all international depository authorities which have been notified by the government where the biological material should be deposited the deposit is to be made before filing of the indian application and you could place the reference of that deposit having been made in the specification you could provide the details about it which international depository authority you have submitted the biological material also you need to specify the source and geographic origin of the biological material that you have used and this needs to be disclosed in the complete specification with specific reference to the pct national phase applications when you are filing a pct national phase application you need to adopt the title description claims drawings that have been used in the pct international application so you adopt the same content as is there in the pct international application for making the pct national phase application for the section 10 subsection 5 provides a very important requirement as uh, pertaining to the claims in the complete specification it says that the claims should relate to a single invention or group of inventions that are linked together by a single inventive concept so what it means is that one patent application could relate to a single invention only or the group of inventions should be linked together by a single inventive concept in case there are multiple inventions in a patent application you may have to divide the application at a later stage to derive different divisional applications out of it however there is a catch in the legal position regarding dividing a patent application i have already made a video regarding the current legal position i have provided a link to that particular video you may refer to it for further understanding also along with the complete specification you need to file a declaration of inventorship wherein you provide details of who are the inventors for this particular invention and this is to be filed on form 5 within one month of filing so either you could file it along with the complete specification or within one month of filing of the complete specification then comes the official fee that you need to file along with the patent application this is provided under first schedule table 1 so column 4 provides the fee that is applicable to any natural person or a startup or a small entity or even an educational institute column 5 relates to a situation when there is a large entity or in case the large entity is filing the application along with a person defined in column 4 so here you see the first row it says that the official filing fee for filing an application is 1600 for a natural person or a startup or a small entity or an educational institute and it is 8000 for the other type of categories also you need to furnish a fee for any additional page of the complete specification if you go beyond 30 pages so what you do is you count the entire complete specification along with the claims and the abstract and the drawing if the total number of pages for all these documents go beyond 30 then you need to pay a fee of 160 rupees per page beyond 30 pages for large entities this fee is 800 per page also up to 10 claims are free of charge in case you go beyond 10 claims 
you need to pay a sum of 320 per claim for natural person, startup, small entity or an educational institute. And for large entity, it is 1600 per claim. Now, I'll be talking about some additional activities that you could undertake along with filing of the complete specification. So, one of those is a request for an early publication which is done under section 11A subsection 2. So, what generally happens is a publication would happen after 18 months of filing of the patent application. So, if you want the patent application to be published before that 18 month period, you could file a request on form 9 along with the official fee and based on that, the patent application would be published on an expeditious route. So, generally what is observed is as soon as you file a form 9, the application would be published within the next one month period. Also, for initiating a faster process towards getting a grant, what you can do is you can file a request for examination also along with the patent application whenever you are filing the patent application. Though, period provided for filing the request for examination is 48 months from the earliest of the priority date or the filing date, means whichever is earlier, you could count 48 months from that particular date and file the request for examination by then. But if you file the request for examination earlier, then what happens is your application is placed higher up in the serial order and based on that serial order, it, your application would be examined. So, the request for examination is provided under section 11B and it says that you could file a request for examination on form 18, which is provided under rule 24B and I have already told you the timelines that are provided for filing of the request for examination, which is for 48 months from the priority date or filing date, whichever is earlier. The official fee for a request for examination is INR 4000 for a small entity, a startup or a natural person and it is 20,000 for a large entity. The new patent rules also provide for an expedited route for examination, which is provided under rule 24C and you could file a request for an expedited examination under form 18A. This is available only to startups or if there are female applicants or in case there are government institutes or research organizations, small entities or in case a person has filed a PCT application with India as the International Search Authority. All these criteria are provided under Rule 24C Sub Rule 1. You could refer to that. I have also made a video on how to expedite examination. I will also place a link for that in this video. You could refer to that video if you want to see how to expedite examination. Again, the period for filing the request for expedited examination is 48 months from the priority date or the filing date, whichever is earlier. The official fee is rupees 8000 for startups, for a natural person or a small entity or educational institutes and 60000 for large entities. Both these uh, requirements are not essentially to be fulfilled when you are filing the patent application. But in case you are looking forward to an expeditious grant of a patent, then ideally you should consider filing a request for examination and also a request for early publication when you are filing the patent application. So, this is all I had regarding the procedure for filing a patent application. In case you have any questions, please drop them in the comments box and I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you very much.